Hello everyone again. This is the second video for the muscular system. The last video we talked about the hierarchy of the muscle structure, how you have small components fitting in to make bigger and bigger components. That helps keep all of the muscle fibers all running in the same direction and nice and bundled and organized so that you can have coordinated contraction to create movement. So when that brings us to today's, we're going to talk about the, the different ways to organize those fascicles. And again, if you don't know what fascicle means, you want to go back to the previous video. So how are we going to organize the fascicles? But before we can think about that, let's talk about what is the general function of all of the muscle tissues. Usually people say, well, to contract. So the function of the muscle tissue is to contract but contraction means to shorten. So what we're really doing is we're shortening the muscle fibers, shortening the cells. And when you shorten the cells, that's gonna pull on, pull on the bones and create movement. Okay, so think about that as we go through. So in those, mu those muscles, here are the muscles. Remember the muscles would be the organs of the muscular system. So for example, here we have the biceps brachii. All of those muscles have an origin and an insertion. And the origin is the less movable attachment and the insertion would be the more movable attachment. So when those muscle fibers shorten, they're going to be pulling, pulling the insertion towards the origin. The insertion always moves towards the origin. So that means that each muscle only does one particular movement, okay? So muscles, so they only go in one movement, always pulled in one direction. So muscles can pull, they never push, okay? So that's why you have a sets of muscles here. So for example, the biceps brachii, that will flex the arm. Then you need a different muscle to extend the arm, and that would be the triceps brachii there. Okay, so they're only moving in one single direction. So the attachments of those muscles, so here would be the muscles. Okay, so there's muscles. They're going to attach to the bones by tendons, and tendons would be the, um, the things that look like dental floss, really. So they are um, cords of what specific tissue type. Do you remember? So those would be dense regular connective tissue. Remember that regular connect, dense regular connective tissue means that all of the collagen fibers are oriented parallel to each other so that they're all going in the same direction. And that allows them to resist the force so that when this muscle contracts and pulls on the tendon to pull on the bone, that all of the force will be, all of the strength will be oriented in the direction that the muscle would be pulling on. Okay, so I would like you, you to know that those tendons are made up of dense regular connective tissues, and hopefully you remember how all of the collagen fibers are oriented in the same direction. If not, you might want to go back to the, that, the lecture tissue slide, the, lecture, the tissue lectures. So those would be tendons. Another type of, of structure that um, connects the muscles to the bones are called the pronorosis. Pronorosis are just like tendon, but instead of being skinny, shiny cord-like structures, like strings, they're flat sheets, but they are both made up of the same tissue type. Do you remember what that tissue type was? Okay, four words dense, regular connective tissue, okay? So again, as the muscle contracts, pulls on it, that is gonna orient all of those collagen fibers in the same direction to resist the force of that, of that muscle. So for example, here, this sheet, this flat sheet, this is an aponeurosis example. So, when you think about movement, please remember that there are two organ systems involved in order to create movement. You have something that pulls, that would be the muscle, and then you have something that it pulls on, that would be the 
bones. So you can't have movement unless you have both pieces, muscle and bones. Without either one of those, you wouldn't be able to have any movement at all. So bones, that is why these are called skeletal muscles. They pull on and move the skeleton. So let's get into those um, fascicle patterns. Do you remember what a fascicle is? It is a group of muscle fibers. So here would be one muscle fiber. Remember those are the cells. They are coll collected together to create a group of muscle fibers. That is a fascicle. What was the name of the connective tissue structure or layer that surrounded those fascicles? So around one single muscle fiber, that's an endomesium, mesium muscle, endo inside. So what surrounds a full fascicle? Starts with a P, perimesium hairy as in around. And just to review, the epimesium surrounds one full skeletal muscle. So the full organ is surrounded by the epimesium. So when you look at the different ways that you can organize those fascicles, they're organized in different ways to create different functions. Okay, so we're just going to work our way through these. Let's start with the circular and please remember that the muscles when they shorten they're only going to shorten in one single direction so for those circular circular fascicles means that those muscle fibers are bundled together to create circular structures and their job is to constrict now what a constrict means is you decrease the diameter of the circle decrease the diameter across the length across, that's what diameter means, decrease the, the length across, and that is going to constrict and make the, the circle smaller. So for example, the orbicularis oculi. Orbicularis refers to the shape, the circular pattern of the fascicles. What does oculi refer to? Oculi as in ocular, which means pertaining to the eye. So we have the orbicularis oculi. What do you think it does? So think about those muscle fibers. What would happen when you constrict them all, when you make them all shorten? Okay, it squeezes your eyes. So when you are blinking or when you are winking or when you are just squeezing your eyes shut, that action is accomplished by the orbicularis oculi. And the orbicularis oculi muscle has a circular, fascic a circular fascicle pattern to create that constriction of the eye. Okay, next one, parallel to the long axis. So what we're looking at here is the, that means that all of the muscle fibers run the full length of the muscle. Okay, so think about that for a second. For example, the biceps brachii, this is a parallel fascicle arrangement. That means that all of those muscle fibers, all of the cells run the entire full length of your arm, of your, you know, your upper arm, because that can, they go from all the way from on origin all the way to insertion. This fascicle arrangement allows for the biggest distance, the furthest distance possible. And the reason that's important is because that's going to create the greatest amount of movement at that joint. Okay, so for example, when the biceps brachii moves, a uh, contract shortens, you're going to get quite a large range of movement as you flex your arm all the way up. Okay, so running parallel allows you to have the greatest amount of movement because the cells can contract, can shorten the greatest amount of distance. <clears throat> so for the parallel fascicle arrangement, there's two different types. You have fusiform. Fusiform means that they have a fat belly. So for example, if you look at the biceps brachii here, you'll notice that it has a fatter part in the middle than it does and it kind of tapers at the end. That's fusiform. So again, fusiform is a subcategory of parallel. 
Then you have what's called a strap muscle, which means that it is the same kind of width across the entire way through. So for example, connecting the, the iliac crest to the um, inside of the tibial tuberosity, that is called the sartorius muscle. It's one of your hip flexors. And it runs the full length across and it doesn't, and that allows for the greatest amount of movement as you do the, the uh, flexion. Okay, next one, convergent. What does it mean to converge? Converge means to come to a point, come all together. So if we're gonna converge together, we're gonna come all together. So convergent muscle fibers means that all of those muscle cells are coming together to one point. So that one side, the origin of the muscle, is going to be broad and the insertion is going to be narrow. And the reason that, the, the, the function of that type of arrangement is to allow the maximum amount of force at one point on the, on the bone, okay? So for example, this right here, this is the pectoralis major muscle, okay? So there's your sternum, so right on your pecs. Your pectoralis major muscle converges and connects to the humerus, and this is going to allow the maximum amount of force to be generated at that one place on the humerus, and that's gonna create more strength at that point. Okay, so this is convergent because it comes to a point. It converges onto a point. That's convergent. Next one, last one, pinnate. Pinnate. So what pinnate means is instead of having, instead of having a tendon on one side and a tendon on another side, it has a central tendon that runs the, the, along the middle of, this, of the muscle. Okay, so we have a tendon that runs along the middle. And instead of having the fibers run from one end of the muscle all the way to the other end of the muscle, they are organized so that they come and meet along that central tendon. Okay, so pinnate is the shape where you have a central tendon and all the fibers are at an angle and come to meet the central tendon. So what might be the advantage of this particular organization? So think about the number of cells, right? So when you have a, one tendon and, and they don't all have to run the full length, that means that you can fit more muscle cells, more muscle fibers into that one space. So when you get more fibers, that means that each one of those can participate in the work and then you end up with more force generated. Now, think about those fibers. So yes, you have more fibers, but that means that those fibers are shorter. And if the fibers are shorter, the cells are shorter, what would be the disadvantage for that muscle, muscle arrangement? If the muscle fibers are shorter, that means that you're going to have a lower range of motion because they're not gonna be able to contract or shorten for as much of a distance. So this, this the pinnate um, fascicle arrangement allows you to maximize the number, the amount of force that that muscle can generate, but it'll have a lower range of motion. Okay, so for example, if you look at the quadricep femoris, so the quadricep femoris group are a collection, a group, a collection of muscles that are found on the front of your leg. Okay, they're the ones that extend your knee. So if you think about you know, spinning your knee out, you can feel all that tension in the very front of your leg. That's the quadriceps femoris group. And if you look at them, notice how the fascicles are arranged so that you, the lines that you see are running towards the middle. So they're not going from one side to another side. They are, here's your central tendon, that white structure right there. And all of the fibers are running towards the central tendon. 
that allows the quadriceps, the quadriceps femoris group, the, all of those muscles to be very, very powerful muscles, which is very important because they're, they, they have to help with strand gravity and they have to help with, mo with um, locomotion, with um, running and walking. They help extend the knee. So they, they need a lot of power, so they need to maximize the number of muscle cells, muscle fibers. There are three different types of pinnate muscles. You have a multipinnate, a bipinnate, and a unipinnate. That the name comes from the number of central tendons. So for multipinnate, that means that you have multiple central tendons. So you have more like a, a collection of different muscle parts within one single muscle. That's multipinnate. Bipinnate, well, what does bi mean? Bi means two. So you have bipinnate, meaning you have two central tendons, two on each side, or one on each side, so a collection of two. And then unipinnate means just one central tendon, so that all of them will kind of fan into that one single tendon. So of these three types of pinnate muscles, which one do you think would have the shortest muscle fibers, the shortest cells, and therefore the least amount of movement, the least uh, range of movement? Multi-tendon, multi, multi I mean. So multi again, so you have several different uh, central tendons, which means that the, sh the muscle fibers are shortest, which gives you the least amount of movement. So we'll just summarize everything I just said. <clears throat> when you can increase the number of cells, more cells means more power or force. Longer cells, greater amount of distance creates more range of mo movement, more range of uh, motion, which creates more general movement. So more fibers, more force. Longer fibers, more movement. So keeping that in mind, what I want you to do right now is go ahead and pause the video, go get yourself a piece of paper and try to figure out which organization pattern does each of these describe. And for the pinnate one, I have not looked at the different types of pinnate muscles. We're just grouping them all together as pinnate. Okay, so go ahead and get your paper, try to figure those out right now. Okay, hopefully you paused and had a chance to look at this. Let's go through them. Oh. So which one has the most muscle fibers? And again, we're looking at the increasing the number of muscle cells that are put into it. And that would be pinnate, because for pinnate, you have all of the, a bunch of cells all packed into a shorter distance because they're all connecting to the central tendon so they don't have to run all the way down. So the pinnate ones would have the most, the greatest number of muscle fibers and therefore the most power. Which one constricts sphincters? Remember constrict is a little bit different from contract. Contract just means to shorten. Constrict means you have a circle and you make the circle smaller. So so the diameter of the circle decreases. Which one would decrease the diameter of a circle? Well, it has to be circular because that's the only one where you have a circular arrangement in a circle for you to decrease. Which one allows for the greatest amount of movement? So if we're looking for the greatest amount of movement, do we want more fibers or longer fibers? We want longer fibers. So which one would have the longest fibers? Parallel. For parallel, remember there's fusiform and there's strap of both of them. For both of those, that means that the muscle fibers, the cells run the entire length of the entire muscle from origin all the way down to insertion. 
Oh, I think I just answered the next one. So which one has runs from origin to insertion? So there's actually two answers here. We have parallel, which is what we just talked about, but convergent also does that. The difference between parallel and convergent is the shape. For parallel, they kind of start at the gunning and go to the front. So there's no broadside. For convergent, you have one broadside that's coming to a point or converging to a point. But in both cases, the muscle fibers run the whole length of the muscle. So which tendon, um, so which one has a tendon that runs down the middle? So a central tendon. Pinnate, remember that's the pinnate down it, and then all the muscle fibers connect to that central tendon. Which one has a broad origin and a narrow insertion? So you start broad and come to a point, that must be convergent. Okay, so that's enough for now. I hope you continue on to the next video, which talks about different types of muscle actions.